So this guy's yelling at me at an intersection. He's like, you got gasoline pouring out the back of your car. And I'm like, no, no, it's my air conditioner. It's fine. And he's like, your engine's not in the back of your car. And I'm like, oh, crap. This can't be good. Right? And it turns out that I got bit by this factory recall for Chevy Cobalt set. It seems to be a really big problem with this model year. But there's also a lot of controversy around it because they didn't really notify everybody about this problem, just like in a couple of states. Apparently, Florida wasn't one of them because I never got the memo. Anyway, long story short, I was never notified. And now I'm driving home and I'm watching the needle drop. So I managed to get it home. And I want to show you what it looked like because we had to turn it on for a minute to get it up on these stands. And you can see it pouring up from over the tank, filling up the heat shield just below the exhaust system. This is terrible. At the time, I hadn't identified, localized the exact brake. I'd assumed where it was, right? So I got it up on the stands and I was looking for it at the time. And I could see it pouring down. Bad scene all around. Clearly, I'm not gonna drive this all the way to the shop to put it on a lift. So it looks like we're gonna drop the tank right here in the driveway and do this repair, so let's get started. I'll point out the good news about this job, even without the lift, is there's just tons of room to work. I removed this first hose that's leading to the emissions canister. It's got white buttons on it, and I simply squeeze those two white buttons in and pull out. Very simple. I demonstrate this now, and I clean up the edge of that connector once it's removed, and I don't want any dirt getting in there. Another connection with white buttons on a rigid line by the fuel filter is pulled off in the same fashion. These connectors are pulled from the chassis one by one, very carefully. Don't want to break the wires or the locking tabs. We see the locking tabs are still pliable. They're not cracked like you'd find on a Ford. I'm going to pull the connections out of the fuel filter. They're color-coded, but one is bigger than the other. This one is blue. And by blue, I mean like a light blue. Be careful when doing this part that you don't get a face full of gasoline. Let it drain. You look at the other one, and it looks like a, a darker blue, like a purple. Again, they're different sizes. So you can't mess them up. Pull these other two electrical connections off of the emissions control box right over here. There's the other one. Unscrew the hose clamp for the fuel filler hose. This is the one closer to the rear of the car. Just going to loosen this up and slide it back. Centrally supporting the gas tank using a small jack and a book, just kind of holding it up. Note that no Chilton manuals were hurt in the making of this video. You can use a 13 mil socket to start loosening the straps. There are four bolts. As the straps loosen, we can see the jack support in the tank. For the rear two bolts, longer extensions will be required. First one is removed and pushed out of the way. Second one is now removed. The tank is supported by the jack and the filler tube. Any cables or connections from the tank that are hanging over this cross member, I'm going to bring over to the tank side now, like you see here. So I'm very slowly and carefully lowering the jack, which is lowering the tank, and I'm monitoring from top and bottom, make sure nothing's catching, make sure nothing's in the way. And I know that the filler tube is holding on it, so you can see it's sort of lunging forward a bit. Everything's looking good. I just want to bring it a little bit lower before I detach the filler tube and bring it around the cross member. I've got it down far enough now to disconnect the filler tube. Remember, I still got a couple of gallons in this tank, so it's a little bit awkward to work with. It's drained as much as I can. Ideally, it should be totally empty to do this. But even with a couple of gallons, it does slosh back and forth and change the center of gravity. So the filler tube is disconnected, so it's dropped down further. The hose still rests on the cross member like you see. It's all but removed at this time. We can see the top of the tank. So now we're going to bring the tube around the cross member, drop the tank fully out the bottom of the car. So I flex the hose to bring it around the cross member, drop the jack all the way down, and the tank is now fully on the ground. I just need to pull the jack out from under. So I slide the entire tank out from under the car. Tank removed. 
The crack on the send fitting is visible, but we can see if I turn the tank sideways, gas just starts pouring out of that crack. We've determined the cause of failure, no doubt. We're going to replace the pump. This is the factory recall issue right here. So let's look at some pumps. Seen aftermarket pumps on Amazon for about $60, but I've also read some horror stories about these things failing, trying to install them and modifying them to install them. Make sure you read the comments before you buy a pump like this. I opted for the OEM pump from AC Delco. Auto parts stores are selling them for a small fortune. I picked mine up on Amazon for $183, the exact same pump, $100 less than an auto parts store with free delivery. Stuff the towel into the gas fill up hose of the tank. I want to make sure the entire tank is clean before I open it up and contaminate the inside of it. So I'll apply a mild detergent and then I'm just going to brush away all the dirt. And I'm going to rinse it off. Nothing crazy here. I think there were like five separate mud dauber nests that had accumulated over the years that were removed from the tank. I've allowed everything to dry. Everything's nice and clean. We're ready to open up the tank now. For safety, I'm using a brass rod that won't spark when it strikes metal. And I'm using it with the hammer to turn the locking ring. I'm just giving it slight taps to deflect it and turn it in this direction, counterclockwise. Eventually, after enough wraps, it'll break free, allowing it to turn and release the fuel pump. The electrical connector is then disconnected from the pump. Cables are then pulled away from the looms built into the tank. And the pump is then gently lifted from the seal. As the pump is first lifted up from the tank, the wires need to be negotiated out because they, they bulge a little. So these need to be manually worked to clear these wires. After the wires are worked out, the pump needs to be straightened because it just fits into the tank. So see the wires are now cleared. Now the pump needs to be straightened perfectly so it could slide right up and then we get up to the float for the level. We can see that the metal bar and then we need to turn the pump to negotiate the float out of the tank. Really simple. Then turn the pump back over and pour the contents of it into the gas tank. During the removal of the pump the rest of the connector had broken off clean. So now I lift off the old o-ring. I'm using the jack just to pull the gas to one side of the gas tank so I could remove all the gasoline real quick. And for this task, I'm just going to use a simple hand pump that I'm going to put right into a proof gas can. I'm going to reuse this gas. I'm just going to filter it through a coffee filter uh, when I reintroduce it back into the tank after this project is completed. There's nothing wrong with this gas, obviously. It's fresh gas and I just don't want to get any of the contaminants from the tank put back into the tank. I lower it back down and I look inside the tank and any of the residual gas in there I wipe with a paper towel and then I use that paper towel that's filled with gas to do a fine detailing on the outside of the tank and any associated hoses and whatnot and I make sure as I pull it right into the entrance that there's no particles or matter that's still in the tank. While I'm waiting for the new fuel pump to arrive I'm going to take this opportunity to swap out the fuel filter. I believe this is the original filter to the car. So I'm going to use a 10 mil socket to loosen this bracket. I'll be using my fuel line remover 25043. And I don't have three hands under a car to demonstrate this, but you wrap the tool around the metal line. And then you push inward and it opens the tabs, allowing you to then pull away with the fuel filter to release it from the fitting. That's kind of what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Now we can pull this filter out from under the car and demonstrate the use of that tool a bit more clearly. We see how the tool wraps around the pipe and we push it in. It butts up against that stop. There's a locking mechanism we see here within this filter that this tool pushes away and opens, allowing the pipe to be released as we push the filter outward. Let's pour out gas from the input port of this filter and see what it looks like. Yeah, that is nasty. Look at all the crap that's caught in that filter. Yeah, that's ready for a change. About 10 years worth. I'll be replacing it with an FF402 Delta Lima from Duralast. This one comes with a bracket, so I'll set it up just like the bracket for the old one. 
the locking tab on this one is plastic. I don't think that should present a problem. So we're going to push the entire unit against the metal fuel line till we hear it lock into place. There's that lock. And now we're going to line up the tab on the bracket. Move this pipe out of the way. So we know we're in the right position. Then we're going to thread the bolt by hand to get it started. Keeping that tab in position, we're going to start ratcheting it down. Before it's fully tightened, I want to get it in the position that it was in before I had loosened the old one so that the hoses fit correctly from the fuel pump. If not, I'll just have to loosen it again and get it into the right position, but this is approximately where it should be. The fuel pump kit that I've ordered has arrived. It has a couple of O-rings in the bag. I pull out the one that was the same diameter as the one from the old fuel pump, put it into place here. This one already has a correct locking mechanism on it for my car, so I leave it alone. We can see there's a filter on the pickup, as it should have, and it has the float level kit. Not all of the ones you buy on the internet have this. We see the float is lowered in first in this direction, and then the pump is straightened out, and it drops right in. It's spring-loaded, so it bottoms out. So it's actually be pressed down. We're going to guide these wires in. They just have to be negotiated into the tank. And it's just going to stick out a little because you can actually push down against the top of it. Then we're going to push down and we're going to turn that locking mechanism, sort of a cam. And we're just going to get it started. Just locks a little bit. We'll make sure that the hoses are aligned to these looms and we know that the position is all correct. When we see that it's a nice fit, like it just feeds right out of the pump and right into the looms. So I'll just dress this in all the way to the end. I removed the mechanism and readjusted before locking down fully. I realized that this H was right by the connector on the old one and I wanted to match it up. But then I locked it down fully as shown and I plug in this cable now to supply power to the fuel pump. And that's it, this fuel pump's ready to go. I've got it sitting out by the car and before I attempt to install it, it's gonna be a lot easier if I first remove the heat shield to negotiate it around the exhaust pipe. Two tabs hold it onto the tank. I pulled the tabs out with a screwdriver or a pick. We can see the tab separated. That's all holding it on. There's a standoff right there, that's about it. I removed the tab from the other side now. Then we'll just drop the shield. Take the opportunity to give this a quick rinsing if necessary and the tank alone will now be pushed under the car into position. I started by bringing the fuel filler hose over the cross member and getting the driver's side into position first negotiating it over the exhaust pipes leaving the passenger side to hang a bit. Now it could be pushed up and towards the driver's side so it falls into this cavity here. See the passenger side fits just fine if I hold it with my hand in position. The driver's side now situated also correctly. Everything sits in its correct place, but if I let go, yeah, it falls back down. Another area of stabilization is the fuel filler hose. Obviously, we see those two here not yet connected. Before we connect it, I want to jack up the tank to stabilize it since it's hanging down. Negotiate the hose back around the pipe in the original location, and I'm going to slide the hose clamp back around. We're just going to snug that back down, get it tight again. Next is the heat shield, which I've brought into position. I have the fasteners here on standby, and I'm going to have to lower the jacket, get it out of the way. It might be helpful to have a friend support the tank when you do this. I did it myself. You want to start by negotiating the heat shield around the exhaust pipe of the driver's side. Everything else, it just fits with no problem. This is somewhat difficult, especially if you're not supporting the tank. Do this very slowly and methodically. Any area of the heat shield can quickly bind on any area of metal around here, making it very difficult to put in. It has to be done very precisely, and then it just fits right in. Still working on the driver's side, once the heat shield is in, we move it around to line it up against that standoff. We place in our first clip as shown, and then the fitting that locks the clip in is pushed in thereafter. You can see it's now fit into place. We'll go around to the pasture side and put in the second clip. 
Take time to look above the tank one last time to make sure that all hoses are seated properly. Centrally locating the jack, we bring up the tank into its final position. We'll start now with the loose fitting of the straps. Once all the straps are loosely fit and everything looks aligned, they'll be tightened down and we'll continue on to cable and line connections. We'll begin all of our reconnections with the two cables that go to the chassis. Plugging them in is shown. Remove the dust caps from the fuel filter. Putting on the larger dark blue fitting first in the rear. I find it easier to squeeze in the buttons when putting on the fitting, especially when you're only working with one hand. You can see I'm pushing in the button and then I'm pushing down on it, then releasing the button. Then I'm pulling back on both of them, making sure they're fully locked in. I could tighten the bracket for the filter now, now that I've correct fitment. And I take that cable bundle and I put it back in the holder, leave it just a little bit of slack, and I lock it down. Check it out, slack's good. Connect this connection to this rigid fitting without busting my fingers. There we go. Hook this connection back on to the emissions canister. This required a little bit of uh, effort to get on. No problem though. There we go. Now I'm going to hook these two electrical cables onto the emissions canister. Here's the second electrical cable. And this side of the cable bundle fits in the holder way up here, so I lock it in now. And this job is done. So we inspect everything, make sure we didn't miss nothing, pull all the tools out from under the car. Let's fill it up with gas. I'm going to start with the gallon and a half of the recovered gas from the tank, for which I'm going to use a coffee filter through a funnel to fill that in. I'm going to need at least three gallons, so after this runs through here, I have another two gallons of gasoline that I'm not going to need the funnel and filter for that I'm just going to dump into here, but I'm just going to get at least three gallons to prime the pump and whatnot before I go and attempt to start this car. I'm going to run the pump dry. I did not expect it to run on the first or second try. The entire fuel system has nothing but air in it. The entire fuel pump has to prime, so it's going to have to cycle a couple times until it pushes that air out and the whole system pressurizes and fills with fuel. Once it pressurizes, it runs just fine, so I do what any sane person does, crawl under the back of the car, and I check for any leaks, any hose fittings that might be leaking, gas tank, whatever check if any fuel whatsoever run and shut it off if there's a problem. This is where a camera phone with uh, light comes in especially handy. And I can just stick the phone right up into the top of the gas tank there. Have a good look. So everything's looking dry. All the fittings are dry. Nothing's leaking. It looks like the problem solved. And I got a new fuel filter as well. So that's nice too. Looking good. That looks good. Also, you could smell it if there's a fuel leak. That's something to be said about that as well. If the gas was leaking, it would be, uh, uh, be quickly realized. My driveway also canters to the right, so if any fuel was leaking, it would pour out that right side as shown in the beginning of the video. I'm going to shut off the car for one last test. I'm just going to put in the remainder of the gas that I have. Now the car's been off for a good long time. I'm going to go and turn it on, and hopefully it should start without any hesitation. Start right up. Now that there's no more problems with air getting in the fuel system, I think this car is ready to come off the stands. We're done with this project. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful for the driveway swap out of the fuel pump on a Chevy Cobalt. Hope you found it enjoyable. Click that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Also, that subscribe button for more videos. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?